Hey everyone, Shaper1000 here. Today, got this old Briggs & Stratton 3 horsepower horizontal shaft or side shaft engine. Ah. Now this thing is locked up. I have some ideas what's going on. Well, I have an idea what's going on with it. And I'll show you here in just a second. I think what's probably going on, I'm almost sure of it. I checked the oil in this thing, and there's not a drop of oil in it. So I'm betting this is a, what is it, date code? This is 1989 engine. You can tell on these Briggs and Strattons. First two, there's a model type and code number on these engines. If you look at the code number at your date code, the first two numbers are the years. Nineteen eight. This this is nineteen eighty nine. Uh, now these older engines like this didn't have a shut off on them. So if you was using it for a pump or you know a generator or something like that, and it ran a lot, a long time. Someone's had this cover off. I can see. And it ran for a long time these things did burn a little oil and if you didn't check the oil every time you put gas in it well you know you're gonna run out of oil and it's gonna blow up because they didn't have a low oil shut off on them but so I'm thinking that's what it is if that's the case I'm probably not gonna rebuild this thing it's just a three horsepower I really don't have a use for a three horsepower but there are some good parts on it. You know, we got a carburetor gas tank set up there. Um, probably coil. We've got the uh, air cleaner. Um, this recoil starter, you know, that's good to have around. So, I, you know, I mean, if I was going to use it for something, I, I would rebuild it. But my guess is that the problem is that it's locked up. It, they ran it it got ran without oil and it just locked up let's take the plug out and look down inside but i don't think the issue's in here we could get lucky but you know maybe someone just drained the oil out of it but i doubt it i don't see any rust in there now I want to check something else here a lot of times these coils and I'll show you when we get inside of here uh, these coils if you adjust these coils and you don't get them tight I have seen them before where the magnet will pull the coil down up against the flywheel and they'll be locked up but being that there's no oil in here that would be my guess that it just seized up like i said if that's the case i'm not i'm not going to rebuild this one i'm not in it to any money so this was a free engine right in here sometimes well that could be sometimes right in here if you don't tighten these these bolts up the magnet will drop down on the magnet will pull the coil down on and uh, it'll cause it to lock up like that I don't know Let me see something here it is on a magnet let's um been outside <laughs> oh oh that scared me I thought that was a spider big old palmetto bug okay wow what a mess ain't out here 10 minutes <laughs> okay so let's uh let's see if that's the case that would be nice 
but I don't know, it doesn't have any oil in it. No, I don't think that's the issue, because still, I should be able to turn that, and I can't. This is the governor here. Yeah, see, I still can't turn this. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me clean some of this off here. We'll pull the side cover off of here and look at the rod. I think the rod seized up onto the crankshaft. It hasn't had any oil in it for quite some time. I mean, we could try to put a little pipe wrench on here and give that a turn. Let's try that first. All right. I said a little, but I can't find my little one. I don't even know if I've got a little one. I do have a little one. I just can't remember what drawer it's in. Turned it a little bit one way. Well, feels a little clunky though. It may run, I don't know. Well, I guess, but we unlocked it. Maybe it was just from setting. Doesn't feel real bad though. Well, we got that unlocked. Should we try to start it? Let's put some oil in here and try to start it. I'll see if Mike will get me some oil. That's been broke for a while. That goes up here. That gets caused by people starting them crooked and trying to run them in anyway. I can fix that. That's not a big deal. I can just put a longer bolt in it. But let me clean this off here. Let's put some oil in it. I'll bet it'll run. It might knock. <laughs> so, but, but hey, you know. <laughs> you take an old engine that's locked up and get it running. That's always cool. <laughs> a little skeleton in there. See a skeleton? That's a... A lizard. Or gecko. Well, all right. Um, let's see if I can find some oil. Let me clean this off. We'll put this back together. Together, I'll show you how to uh, adjust that coil, and uh, yeah, we'll shoot some gas in and see if it'll run. All right. So I've got my drill here. We're going to clean these magnets off. Now, I don't know if you guys watch Terrell Fixes All or not. He got a bulletin from Briggs and Stratton and said that rust between this and the coil will not cause it not, will not cause it, won't make it not run. Which I, I got to disagree with that because... 
And, you know, this guy has his own business. You know, he's not a backyard guy. I mean, he's a legitimate business. But because I have before had these things sitting outside and go to start them, they won't start. And all I did, I didn't even pull the coil off. I just stuck a piece of sandpaper in between the coil and the magnet and run it a few times, like, you know, back and forth like that. And then it would run. I don't care what you say, if rust is built up between the magnet and the coil, it's going to short it out. It's going to cause it not to run. So, but... We'll give it a quick clean now. These magnets can get weak over time. Uh oh. I see something there I don't like. I see some moving movement in between there. Maybe it's just me. No, I see some movement there. Never had that happen before. I mean, I'm sure it does, but I never had it happen. <laughs> We're just going to clean the laminates off of this. off so it's got a good solid ground back in here we're gonna put our two little bolts in here Whatever you do, don't cross thread these ones. So we're gonna tank these up as far away from the turn the magnets the magnet up here there's the magnet right there now I've got just a piece of an old envelope folded over I'm gonna stick that in there you can use printing paper if you want I'm gonna loosen these and you'll see that drop down on it see dropped right down on it now once it does that, I'm going to give it a little tighten. Don't strip them. Now, and that's just about right. Make sure this thing's on. Because we may have to... I don't feel anything. Oh, yeah, I do. I feel a little bit. We may have to end up checking the points on this thing. I 
Now let's put this back on here. Like I said, that's the governor, and I forgot that bolt. So, that's not a big deal because the other one will hold it in place, and we're not up against the magnets, so. And in there. Pull that up there, we'll put this back in. Make sure that's working, yep. So that's working. Let's put this on here. Yeah, I can tell this has been off there. You know what? See that? I'm gonna shoot some oil down in there, some penetrating fluid, WD-40 or something, so this doesn't happen. All right, let me do that. All right, so that's good. back in here once we get our bolts in here we're going to check them for spark see if we got spark okay guys so monkey ran down got me some oil we're going to put some oil on this we're going to pull it over a few times Corvette guy's wife. This is just some cheap stuff. I had her go down to the gas station pick me up, of course. She's my parts runner. So honestly, it might it might knock, but then again, it might run fine. So All right, let me let me get this finished. It's pretty close now. Let me get this finished filling up, and then uh, then we'll pull it over and see if we got spark. All right, guys. So I got intermittent spark, but it might do something. That's not the plug we had in there. I tried another plug, but it's you know pretty much the same thing. I don't know if it's in this wire or in the points. So, now I'm going to get some gas. We'll shoot a little bit of gas down here in this carburetor. Well, you know what? First, let's, let's use the brake, the brake cleaner. It worked the other day for us, so let's try that first. Okay, guys. Uh, let me see. Choke. There's choke. It's on. Let's try this out, see what happens. Uh, 
Okay, let me get some gas. We'll try the gas first. Okay, guys, so I took some gas out of the vet, and I used this line here, this rubber fuel line, to put some fuel in it. I think I put too much in. It's probably flooded, but let's try it. If it don't start, then um, then we'll we'll check the points, see why we're getting intermittent spark. But I, you know, it should fire. I hate when it does. All right, let's pull the. Let's get into the points. Okay, guys, this is what I did. I had to change the coil. Um, that little black motor over there is an 84, and it's got electronic ignition. I went to check the points, and I was like, wait a minute. Before I pull all this apart, this has got electronic. And I could get spark. I put shrink wrap around there. I could get spark if I move this a certain way. I could get all kinds of spark, but as soon as I go to put it on the, on the plug... No matter what, it lost spark. So, I've got spark in this. I haven't tried it yet. But if it runs, you know, if it'll start up and die, then we'll we'll put some gas in the we'll put some gas in the tank and see how it runs. But let's give this a shot. I know it's not tight, but what are you guys looking at here? Okay, let's see. See if we can get it to run. It fired. I think it's going to run. Let's, um, let's dribble a little gas down in that carburetor. That wasn't much at all. There we got some. I mean, it fired. So. Put some gas in it. Ooh. Oh. Well, that tank looks like crap. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> that tank shot. Okay, let me let me see if I can clean that out some. Okay, guys, I cleaned that out the best I could. Not real great. <laughs> it is leaking, it looked like. I put some gas in it. I can only imagine what that carburetor is like, but I do have another tank and carburetor that will fit on there. going to suck fuel up but that's another day but we took an engine that was free that was locked up and we got it running and it sounds good I don't hear any knocking so that's probably going to be a good little three horsepower engine all right guys I'll be back with you in a second check it out guys I shut you off and pulled the rope one more time Ha <laughs> ha. 
All right, that's uh, that's pretty cool. be back with you okay guys so hope you enjoyed that one because I had a lot of fun um, I don't know that coil started doing the same thing and I tried five different plugs that I know are good and uh, as soon as I plug it in it wouldn't spark across the gap but if I put my finger across the gap like that, I could feel it. It would shock the hell out of me. Don't know what was going on, but it got spark. So, um, yeah, we took a locked up engine. That thing sounds peppy. Now, I ordered a throttle cable, a twist cable, for the uh, Thunderbird and uh, the mini bike. Ordered a carburetor and a pipe. That's pretty peppy. If I'd known that, I would have ordered, uh, if I'd known that engine was gonna run that good, I would have just ordered a tank for it and a pipe for that. Because the carburetor's fine, apparently, because it's it'll sit in idle and it revs up. So, uh, yeah, I would have just ordered a tank. Them things are cheap, they're a dime a dozen. I would have ordered a tank for it. A bigger tank, this one over here is a lot deeper tank but it's the same tank I do believe I can use it but man um, that still might be a possibility to put on that Thunderbird and uh, see what happens with it we'll see how that one runs because 79 cc that's three horsepower which that that's a um, it's a Harbor Freight engine, um, so a Predator 79 cc, which is three horsepower. That's a three horsepower, but that thing sounds peppy. That might be another video. <laughs> we may put it on there. I mean, you know, I can change it over in 10 minutes, put it on there and see what it sounds like, or, you know, see what it runs like. Whichever runs the best, we'll leave it on there and then sell the bike with whatever engine's the better engine on it. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, happy Easter. Um, I may throw out a quick video tomorrow telling you happy Easter. Um, today's Saturday, so tomorrow's Easter. Um, I think I'm going to smoke a ham. I might bring you along with me for that. I smoked a ham twice for Christmas, but, you know, for Easter, well, let's see. You know, I may throw a video out for you guys tomorrow. But, yeah, um, as soon as those parts come in, we'll get back on the Thunderbird. And we'll throw the carb on it and the throttle and see what we can do with it. Um, man, that engine sounds good. It sounds peppy. I looked down inside the cylinder the best I could. I didn't get my scope out. Didn't really have to. I shine a light down in there. And you can still see the cross hatching in that thing. And it, it's clean inside that cylinder. Clean. So I don't think it's had a lot of use since 1989. But that'd be a good good little motor for something like that. Now remember guys, this is a kid's bike. It's not gonna run me up the hill 40 miles an hour. It might run me down the hill 35 to 40. But you know, for a kid, it'd be it'd be it'd be a good beginner bike for somebody. You can get, like I said, all kinds of upgrades. You can get a front brake system for it. You can get hydraulic brakes for the back, and you can get risers for the uh, handlebars, raise them up a little bit. You get all kinds of stuff for them things. It's a mini bike, man. You can hop them up. You can change the, the sprocket too. The sprocket, it's kind of a small sprocket. It's it's built for some speed. If I put a bigger sprocket on it, if I was going to keep it, I would go with another size up sprocket for more torque. Because usually you're going, you're going to be riding him off road. You're going to be going up hills and, and, you know, through the woods and stuff. 
you know, you really don't need a lot of speed. You're not, you know, very seldom are you going to have something like that out on the highway where you, where you need to run 35 miles an hour. You want torque on something like that on an off-road vehicle. You want a little speed, but you kind of want an in-between. But anyway, we took an engine that was locked up. I, 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 I almost pulled the side cover off, but I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's just try it. <coughs> so, probably just from scent with no oil, but it sounds good. There's no knocks, no pings, no nothing in that engine. So, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully your weekend's going great. And, uh, you know, happy Easter, everyone. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Um, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I gotta clean all this stuff up now. It's a lot easier getting the stuff out than putting it back in. <laughs> Alright guys, especially because, you know, it's like, you know, I got two, four, six, eight, and 12 I got 12 drawers that different wrenches and stuff are in and you know it's like which one did this come out <coughs> so thanks for watching guys appreciate it stay tuned for another video I got an unboxing video coming up right after this one so stick around guys we'll see you in the next one Shea Bear the myth the man the legend I'm gone for now thanks for joining me happy Easter everyone stay safe enjoy yourself bye bye and take care one more time for fun